our surveillance planes and other means is only circumstantial, but it is mounting. That Iran agreed to look the other way while the most capable warplanes in the Iraqi Air Force used Iranian airfields. Some of the Iraqi warplanes, which began flying to Iran earlier this week, are F-1 Mirage jets, the best Saddam has. The F-1 Mirage is the plane that launches Exocet anti-ship missiles. An Iraqi warplane with two Exocet missiles killed 37 sailors on board the USS Stark in 1987. It was allegedly an accident. The sources say along with the Mirage jets in Iran is the surviving Iraqi AWACS plane, capable of giving radar directions to a large number of attacking Mirage jets. Last week, U.S. warships in the Persian Gulf were the intended targets of three Exocet-carrying Mirage jets, but that attack was thwarted when a Saudi F-15 shot down two of the planes. But an air attack with Exocets coming out of Iran could have caught U.S. forces looking the other way. No longer. Well, we would be absolutely um, uh, not worth our salt as military people if we ignored the fact that those planes could fly back out of Iran after us, and therefore we obviously have contingencies that will take care of that situation if it were to occur. Garrick, the State Department says it accepts Iran's assurances that those 40 to 50 Iraqi warplanes will be sequestered for the remainder of the war, but military commanders don't trust the diplomatic assertions. Garrick? Oh, right, Fred. Uh, is it's got minds like this, the PMN. Pay attention to Major George Ketchell. His Marines did. Three to five pounds of pressure blows your foot off. It's a very effective mine. That much, your foot's missing. This is taking all the way off back to the knee. He buries these in. You can't see them. The guy knows Iraq has buried an estimated on. half million mines along the front line since August. Major Ketchell wanted his men to know what they might be facing. Some people win the lotto. You find one of these, you're going to win it. You're going to eat about 14 pounds of explosives. They're not going to find your shoes. They're not going to find nothing. See a little red mist there. That's a problem. Once again, you can identify it. Mark it, avoid it. This ain't the war to be out there playing Rambo. Our artillery, like you said, in our air is going to do a lot to their defensive position before we move in. So I'm pretty confident. I mean, you know, if you die, you die, but I'm believing to stay alive as long as I can. Preserving American lives is why the air war has continued this long and will go on longer before a ground assault begins. Their commanding general in another war watched Marines die in his arms. General Walter Boomer knows what combat did to him and will do to his Marines. Uh, they, uh, more so than anyone, uh, will realize that life really does hang by a thread. Uh, and it's a very thin thread in combat. And uh, when it's all over and they're okay, they'll say, you know, it's uh, really good to be alive. And I think I'll approach things maybe a little bit differently. On the front line, during a cold desert winter, a blanket, a weapon, and the lessons of his training are three things which a soldier keeps at hand. Survival is his ultimate aim. Just waiting. That's all we do. Soon our turn will come. Mike Betcher, NBC News, Saudi Arabia.